So this is the advanced colour section and the first file is called You Wouldn't Like Me When I'm Angry. And absolutely, when it came up on screen, um, did it have impact? Then yes, I have to say it did. I can... It looks like the author's trying to give me kind of almost a, a bit of an incredible Hulk style feel with the green um, person um, and then having the flames behind. And I can see the connection between the person, the expression and the flames behind. So that does work. It's always important when you're trying to do portraits. If you're going to have something in the background, you know, try and make sure that it is related as such. They've then obviously then done a, a kind of, a, dare I say, a bit of manipulation in whatever software that they've used and turned it more into what I feel is, is a digital um, piece of art and not a, a photograph or a, um, a composite as such. Um, for me, I, I think it's probably let down. It's got the lines across the face, which means for me, it takes away some of the contact with the person as well. I can understand why you've done it and kind of put the, the coloration in the eyes as well. I, I just think, unfortunately, I think that you've gone just a little bit too far. Um, absolutely worth practicing doing things like this and putting composites together. So when you come to more complex scenes, um, then, you know, practice makes perfect as such. But I think as kind of as trying to, you know, give some emotion, come across as part of a portrait, then, you know, it's probably worth experimenting a little bit further uh, as such. So the next image that we'll look at is called Wintry Day. And as part of that landscape layering effect that I was looking for, yes, I think it's got that. It's got the stone. Um, it's then got the uh, the kind of the barrier um, to, to stop uh, people falling off the edge as such. Um, but the barrier is small enough for me to still move past as a viewer with the waves in the background with the pier. And then you've still got some lighting in that stormy sky as well. I think as part of the waves crashing in as well, I wouldn't expect, you know, the lighting to be absolutely fantastic. But I think that you've done a reasonable job. It looks like some of the waves have, have spilled over. You can see that on the, the bottom left hand side. I've got a bit of a, uh, a reflection as well. Um, and I think, yeah, you, you know, you, you've captured the scene of what's going on as part of a exactly as the title he says, um, a wintry day, a, a storm. Um, I think if the lighting had been stronger um, on the day or some of the waves had been just a little bit more dramatic and kind of really splashing up over the side, I think that would have then just added just something a little bit extra for me to go and look at again. I just felt that as part of the section that there are other images where the lighting or the composition was just for me just a little bit more attractive. The next image that we'll look at is called Water Nymph. And here, once again, the author has done something creative. It looks like the, a model um, who's doing a what we would call a crab position um, on the on the seafront. And then looks like they've captured a water drop and placed the uh, the water nymph the other way up. In, in the water drop and made that element just a little bit sharper as well. Um, once again, I think it's, it's a good idea and I think it's the start of, dare I suggest, the creative process for you. Um, I think once, once I've seen it, is there anything for me to kind of really grasp and, and keep my interest? Um, and I don't think there is a, as part of this file. Um, however, as part of the idea, so having one out of focus element and then almost repeating the same element, but in focus in a slightly different area of the image. Yes, that starts to work. Um, dare I suggest um, possibly, you know, start experimenting with textures as well as depth of field 
as well. You can see as part of the tide line that's running through. So I have got that diagonal composition in the file. There are some areas that I feel are kind of burnt out as part of that. And that kind of, for me, uh, needs burning in as well. I just didn't feel kind of the overall the composition um, and also the quality of the file as well um, really kind of came across. I wondered, you know, if this um, it looks like a young lady has been taken in a in a studio setting um, and then has been placed within the scene as well. Um, whether it actually would have been stronger just as a as a straightforward photograph with you playing with light and texture uh, while in that shape, uh, whether that possibly could have been um, a little bit more uh, stronger composition as well. So the next image that we are going to look at is called Underground Terrace. And I liked the idea of this once again. I've got something on the left, something on the right. I can move through, I can go up the steps, and is there anything when I reach the end of the steps? And I think, yes, there is a quite an interesting tower um, there. I think as part of the exposure as well, the author has um, managed quite a, a quite a good um, tonal range and also an exposure range in the file as well. So I've got detail in the highlights in the foreground and also detail in the shadows in the kind of the brickwork of, of the uh, the tunnel as well. I've got a fairly interesting sky as well, and I think that the the elements do fit together. Um, the lighting's not been absolutely spectacular on the day, but I still think it's a competent uh, record stroke documentary picture of, you know, giving me an idea of what the place is like. Um, I think that that does fit. I'm hoping when you've been there that you've um, you've taken a few more pictures and you once again kind of experimented with different angles, different compositional angles, just to see if you could have got anything else out of the scene but once again I just felt the ones that I've held back right to the end that I've given the awards to were just for me just a little bit stronger. The next image that we'll look at is called The Weary Traveller. And I think uh, as part of a portrait I, I can see the you know, the title fits what I'm viewing. So that's the first thing, you know, you've got the cases. You can imagine that she's been traveling on some kind of train or, or bus, etc. Um, and the position that she's in as well. I, I just wondered uh, as part of this. So it looks like it has been taken in, in a studio setting. Um, I don't mind the backdrop. It, you know, there's detail there. It's not completely white. It's not completely black. Um, so but it doesn't impose onto uh, the model as well. W whether you could have kind of developed the scene a little bit. Once again, and I've already co kind of commented, or I think on one image in the, the mono section, where the lighting is very, very even and, and probably what you would call flat. Um, whether you could have, you know, started to play with the lighting and, and just made it for me just a little bit more dynamic. Um, I think from being um, slightly more critical is you look at the person's expression on their face and instead of looking weary, they're just looking more, more tired, more, you know, you know, it, it's been it's been a long session as part of a shoot. Um, and these are some of the last images. I don't know whether you could have, like I say, done something a little bit more with the arrangement and the lighting, I feel, to, to just kind of bring that across a little bit more. The next image is called the Hungarian Parliament. And I think that from what is presented to, to the person, it looks like, you know, they've been on holiday and, and managed to get access as, dare I say, as part of a trip. So you're never actually going to know when you go on these things what you're going to um, expect. But I think that, you know, um, 
I think that you, you've made quite a reasonable attempt. You you were probably going to have to balance between um, how much in, in details you included versus what you actually excluded as well. And I, you know, even though it looks like the, there is potential um, a, a lot of detail at the uh, in the roof of the building, um, you've tried to compromise and show me a bit of foreground, bit of middle ground, and also just to give me an eye a flavour of the roof as well and i think you've done you know a reasonable job um the it looks like kind of the speaker's position stroke the clock on the right hand side of the frame that's probably the strongest part um of the image you've also managed to achieve probably quite a decent depth of field as well it's sharp um reasonably all the way through as well it probably looks like that you've not had, had the opportunity, dare I say, to use a tripod. But I still think, you know, uh, your image stabilisation and your cameras made sure that it's kind of recorded all of the details. You're always going to struggle in these kind of situations, probably because it's the, you know, the scene is, sit, is, uh, is lit by quite a lot of artificial light. But I think that your white balance is fairly spot on as well. So your whites are white. Um, uh, and so... And there's nothing kind of very, very highlighty within the frame. There is plenty of detail. I think if it was my image, once again, I'd just look to see if you could just straighten up some of the, the verticals. Some of the pillars are slightly converging. You might not be able to because of the angle that it's been taken. But, you know, it's still worth, uh, you know, worth seeing. I wondered if you wanted to, you know, use this image and then kind of take it forward, whether you go to these places and you've taken several images so there's quite a lot of detail in some of these archers um, and especially dare I say towards the speaking lectern if you've got access there and you know buildings like this are great to be able to then do a panel of three as part of a composition so if one image isn't strong enough being able to show kind of a whole sequence being able to tell a story in three five or seven images might then just been able for you to to get the best out of taking those series of pictures in the in the parliament building here as well the next image that we'll look at is called tell me more tell me more and once again that kind of documentary style scene um, uh, of two people whether you knew them or whether you're just taking this with kind of a fairly long lens you're always from the position that they're sitting um, you're always going to kind of have the back of one person towards you but I think you know seeing um, the more dominant person in the frame with their with their face towards you um, or towards the other person um, just does show you know enough of kind of an interaction and actually from the expression on their, their faces and their hand gestures you can kind of build up that that feeling of uh, dare I say two women gossiping over a cup of tea or, or a drink or so I don't think the, the things in the background are particularly distracting you've cropped in fairly close um, you know, you've got the edge of um, it looks like a, uh, some kind of settee sofa in the foreground. That's not distracting um, because once again, you're concentrating on the hand gestures and the face expressions of those two people. There are other people in the background. Looks like yeah, either in another cafe or with a glass divider. They're not distracting at all. I think yes, you know, it does. It fits together. Uh, no problem to tell the story um relating to the title however what i did find unfortunately is the the kind of the technical quality of the file for me is very very let down so for me i, I found it very very noisy so if you look especially on the black um the back of the chair that um, the lady on the left hand side is sitting when you look at that for me that should be black and, and that's that's filled quite a lot with what we call colour noise. Um, so whether you've used a very, very high ISO on your camera to capture that as well. 
The second thing is that's kind of a bit of a giveaway is you can see lines that are running all the way through very, very dark areas. Um, and that's uh, another sign that you've probably got your, your camera setting um, a little bit too high um, for what your, your camera really can resolve. So there are, you know, what, what they would call a standard range on a camera um, for ISOs. And then they have more... Um, what they call H1, H2, H3 style modes, where they, the sensitivity of the sensor is, is boosted artificially through software. And that's where you start to get some of these lines and colour noise especially coming in as well. Um, the other thing to kind of notice is as much as the, the face of the lady who uh, that you can see um, is, you know, there is detail there. Unfortunately, it's not sharp. There isn't really an L there isn't really a, a part within the frame that is particularly sharp, absolutely pin sharp. So, uh, like I say, whether you, you've seen the scene, you've tried to boost your ISO just to get a fast enough shutter speed, and it's just not quite been there. Um, so, I would probably go back and practice and start experimenting with kind of the limitations of your camera as well. Different cameras do uh, are very good at different things. Um, so it's just knowing what kind of uh, how good your equipment is or what the kind of the limitations are of the equipment that you've got and working within those. The next image is called Take a Seat. I found the, the rows of, of chairs uh, folded against the table and the lighting and the um, the shadows of that quite attractive. It looks like it's kind of fairly um, early evening because you've got kind of the blueness in the chairs as well. I also like that there's just what that even though all the other chairs potentially are just about folded up against all of the tables, there's one table on the left hand side where all the chairs are down. So in fact, it breaks that repeating pattern you've got um uh, even though you've got that pattern you've then broken the pattern with uh, it looks like a, a cat um whether the cat was there or whether the cat has been should i say uh, dropped in from another photograph um that's obviously not really for me to to comment on but does it fit yes i think i think it helps tell the story um You've got to kind of search compositionally for the cat. It is quite small within the frame and it probably looks just a little bit sharper than the the rest of the scene, which makes me feel it possibly might have been um, dropped in from, from um, another scene. I like the idea that's come across. Um, it's something worth working on once again. Um, but like I say, I just felt that there were other images that were slightly stronger. So the next image that we'll look at is called Solitude. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the seafront at Blackpool. And yeah, I like the idea. Absolutely, it fits the title of Solitude. I've just got that figure um, on their own. I think that the position that they are, yes, they are on the third. Um, they're not. Um, they're not hidden by anything. I've got a fairly kind of clear view. I, I wondered if, uh, uh, as much as you've got the the floor with the detail, um, and I think it's the um, floor with kind of uh, very very funny style sayings um, on it as well adds a bit of interest but also adds a quite a smooth surface to capture the reflections in as well it is whether it was worth cropping some of the um some of the sky off a bit so i potentially would crop down to probably as low as the the darker area of the cloud you've got quite a you've got a little bit of blue sky that's starting to appear above if you do that, then it just move. It just means that you move the figure off the horizon. 
And also, because I don't think the lighting has been absolutely spectacular on the day, whether it would be worth um, converting it to a monochrome as well. So you'd still be able to see some of the writing, get a feel for it, but the figure and then the, the, the art kind of sculptures with the, the lights on as well. Uh, there isn't much detail there anyway, but you'd still be able to have the reflections as well. Um, possibly that might uh, have improved it just a little bit. The next image is called Reflections in Elter Water. And the lighting's overcast and fairly soft, but it has allowed you to capture the reflection. As part of that landscape formula, yes, I've got that, uh, that layering effect. So I like the, the, the stones to begin with in the foreground. I can move to the middle ground with an attractive uh, reflection. There's nothing really breaking that reflection. I've then got some reeds on the, the, the left hand side as well. The horizon it is just off the centre of the image and I can move through to past to water to the fells beyond as well. And I've got lighting that's on the trees. It does start to get as, as part of the sky um, fairly fairly start uh, light and, and more kind of a lack of detail there but I think that there's one or two areas and it's not burnt out but the author has made the decision to minimize the amount of sky and I think that's been a, a wise choice as well so I think compositionally and the decisions that you had to have made by the type of lighting I think that you've made the correct decisions unfortunately for me I didn't think that it was as sharp as it could be. When you look at the rocks in the foreground, um, I don't think that they were absolutely pin sharp. Um, they're OK, but without, you know, without kind of stating the obvious, they're not going to get up and jump. They're not going to get up out the water and run off, as, as to say. So they're always going to be there. There's, no, there's nothing, it doesn't look like it's a very, very windy day. So even if you didn't have a, a tripod, even though, you know, it's always recommended to use a tripod for landscape, um, you should probably still have been able to get F8 out of your camera handheld and get still, still quite a, a good depth of field uh, as part of the image. The idea is there. It's just about that final execution, I think, would have... Uh, just a little bit more time, a little bit more practice on the technique probably would have just improved that image just a little bit more for me. The next image is called Red Spindle. And this is for me kind of a bit of a, a pattern picture. I've already said whenever you get red within the frame, your eye instantly goes to it. And I can see all of the detail even though it's a fairly kind of flat scene there's still plenty of detail it's still sharp all the way through as well i think it's one of these scenes where you know i wonder where you've actually taken it are there any other kind of little cameo pictures like this that would make an interesting panel you know whether you've been you've been to some kind of um, I don't know, cotton mill or, or something like that, where, the, you know, there's a series of detailed pictures that you could have taken, which would have then allowed me to put the scene that I'm looking at into context as well. You know, I've already mentioned it again. One of the criteria is once I've looked at it, is it strong enough for me to go back and look at it again and get something slightly different? And I don't think that it is... Um, I don't mind that the spindle is, like I say, it looks like it's been painted red or got some tape. It's in the centre of the frame. Um, I, I just think once I've seen it, I probably want to go and look at something else. And that's where I think a panel for me would have helped me understand what I'm seeing. So the next image tonight is called let me just, 
red lily detail. And here the author's gone in very, very close. The stamen are, are sharp, uh, just off center as well. But I think they've also used an appropriate depth of field. I think the lighting uh, has just been right as well. So I can see some darker leaves on the upper left, um, upper right hand area of the image and some lighter ones in the bottom left of the image. The centre, there's the stamen of the flower, it's just off centre as well. There's plenty of detail all the way through. And I think it was probably appropriate that you've gone in close. Um, I think that you've probably done uh, the best that, that you possibly could with the scene that was there. But I just felt that once again, there were some others um, images that for me were stronger. The next one's called Rainbow over Glen Locke. And absolutely, you know, you've seen this, um, whether you'd been waiting a while for it or um, you'd just seen it and you just managed to stop the car in, in, a, in a quite a safe place and dive out and take the picture. Um, I think that you've done quite a reasonable job of, of capturing the image. I've got detail in the foreground, it, then it looks like some kind of road or track that's running through the frame. And then I've got the, the, uh, the fells in the background, I've got lighting and I've got the clouds as well. As much as obviously all of this happens in a blink of an eye and you've got to make a decision, I either get the picture or I, you know, work on my landscape formula and start to... Um, you know, put together things compositionally within the frame. Is there anything that you could have got as part of your landscape formula, something a little bit more solid in the foreground? I can see that there's a bit of a fence coming in um, just at the, the bottom edge of the frame. Could you have used that a little bit more? Um, could you have enhanced the colours? So the, the rainbow for me, Yes, I can see the rainbow. And once again, you've done very well to make sure you've got all of it in the frame um, end to end. But as part of that, could you have just enhanced those colours, the contrast just a little bit more? It's just starting to fade into the background, into the clouds as such, just to kind of really boost uh, a little bit more contrast, a little bit more colour. And I think for me, that would have been uh, more pleasing and just probably enhance the image just a little bit more. So the next image that we have is called Plains at Dawn. And I don't mind the darker base um, I can move through that um, and then I've got a series of dark trees and mist in between that probably that very very early morning mist and then I've got cloud detail which I found quite pleasing as well it, it's just about been presented in a letterbox format and I think that's suitable for the image I like the trees and I like the mist I think, unfortunately for me, what I'm struggling for is a focal point as part of the image. Um, whether you could have done something with, um, as much as the image says that, you know, that the, the, there are planes in the mist or planes at dawn. And you can just about see in the bottom three planes. I don't think, unfortunately for me, they're strong enough. Um, I think if I was presented with that scene, I possibly might have s seen what I could have done with a with a longer lens, maybe a 70 to 200 and just concentrated on one or two trees with mist. Um, I think possibly you might have gone just a little bit too wide. I can see, you know, you've tried to put, you know, um, something on the, the left hand side, something on the right hand side. Um, and then put something in, in the middle. Uh, but I just, for me, don't think um, those planes are, you know, strong enough as a focal point, unfortunately. So 
So the next image is called Over and Under the River Cam. I thought this was a pleasant scene and I liked the triangular composition that you've got. So you've got the boat on the left hand side. You've then got the people at what I would class as the opportune moment, almost right in the centre of the bridge. And then you've got um, some boat, a uh, person with a boat um, on the right hand side. And I liked that triangular composition. You've also got one then just coming in the background in, in the shadows as well. I think you've shown me just enough of the bridge to give me an idea of the bridge, an idea of the setting as well. You've not included any sky, but I don't think probably including any sky would have added anything to the story. It's more about the people relaxing in the boats um, or the people walking across the bridge. I think the lighting has been uh, just right on the day, really, to pick up some of the modelling in the, the detail of the um, of the bridge and also just enough to cast a reflection on the boat as well. A very, very pleasant scene, uh, which I think that you've done justice as part of your capture. The next image. On the campaign trial, well, under the under the circumstances, he's a very popular gentleman at the minute, whether you like him or you don't like him, as such. Uh, and let me commend the author. You've you know you've seen the scene, even though you know that it is a famous person. Um, you know, using images of famous people in competitions, um, you've obviously got to choose when you when you best use them. Um, because like all politicians or the Prime Minister, you're popular one day, you're not as popular the next day as such. But a very recognisable character as part of that documentary scene. I think that you've also done really well to get yourself in, into a position where there's nobody in front of you. You've got a clear shot as well. Um, I also like that, you know, you can tell... Which one's the Prime Minister, you know, explaining something with his hands open, the expression on the body, but also which one is the reporter as well, holding his phone um, towards the Prime Minister as well. Um, you've got the kind of the three people. Um, and once again, you've made sure as part of that scene, there's nothing distracting in, in the background. Um, there are people walking behind, but you haven't got half a person within a frame as well. Um, I think, yeah, all, all the elements are there and you should be very pleased with what you've captured as well. And the next image is called when I just found it on my piece of paper. is called Museum Roof. And what's attracted you is once again that kind of architectural style picture. You've not placed it centrally within the frame. You've, sent, you've kind of the main focal point is where all of these kind of almost converging parts of the frame come together and you've just moved it off centre as well. The lighting looks like it's been fairly kind of overcast, but that means then that you haven't got any burnt out highlights, which I think does work. And you've captured um, all of the detail that's in the glass. It's probably not the most spectacular roof um, uh, as part of that, but I th it still gives me a good impression of what it's like as well. Wondered what it had been uh, possibly like if you'd have captured more of the building yes you've gone here and you've taken you know one part of the detail but possibly going a little bit wider showing me some of the either the floor in the building as well as the roof and not just the roof where maybe that would have for me just have improved the composition just a little bit more so this is moonlight on the ganges 
And yes, I can, you know, I, I can see the moon on the, the right hand side, just off centre of the frame. Um, there doesn't seem to be an awful lot of, of action going on, but that's fine. You know, it still gives me an impression of, of what's there. Um, it looks like possibly from the angle that's been taken, whether you've, you've actually been on a boat at, at the time. Um, for me, unfortunately, I don't find the um, the image as sharp as it possibly could be. Um, I think probably the... Uh, um, just having a look. Probably the... the maybe the, the street lamp uh, with the highlight on with the lamp is probably the sharpest area of the frame. Um, and yes, you know, you are going to struggle with probably the amount of available light and how good your camera is at low light uh, taking pictures um, for that. But I, I think uh, having actually been there and trying to convey all the action that goes on during the day... Um, I think probably a, a shot during the day with, with all of the people bathing in the Ganges, I think for me would have been more pleasing and probably would have more come across, uh, giving me a sense of what's going on if, I've ne if I'd never been there. There are one or two highlights as part of the, the image that's been shown, um, especially on the left hand side, you've got two or three spotlights where you're just starting to lose a little bit of detail. And I'd possibly be very tempted just on the extreme left of the frame just to straighten up um, that uh, the banking as well um, as part of that. But I, I think if you were going to if you were presented with the same scene and you wanted to try and convey that as well, as much as you've got um, detail and interest on the left hand side and you can just about say you've got the moon um, as well, filling out the darker area. I'm really looking for something on the right hand side to balance up. So it could even just be an empty boat, um, just something on that right hand side, just to try and balance up each of the, the, the sides of the frame for me would have made it more pleasing. The next image is called Mine's Bigger Than Yours. And... I liked the idea, the kind of the documentary title of this. So this poor guy going out onto the sands with his little tiny kite, only for somebody else to come with this absolutely ginormous one. I liked the sense of scale between the, the figure and how big that kite actually is. Um, whether it was kind of Lytham uh, Kite Festival or not. I really I really did like the idea and I think that it you know it did work um, as part of you probably taking lots of different pictures um, of the kite festival um, I think you know you've done very well to get this one kind of the lack of people I think also works as well um, and like I say the play on the title I think um, just makes it an amusing photograph as well and that you should be pleased with it So the next image is called MIA and yeah you know as part of what has been presented yes it is a bit of a pattern picture but are they all slightly different yes so that adds a point of interest there's just one peg with no cog on so that for me is kind of the quirk in the pattern so that does work as well I like the coloration that's been presented as well you've got the rusty kind of red background um, or it looks like it's actually on some wood um, and then all the kind of the rusty cogs as well all very very slightly different yes I think I, I think it does tell a, an interesting story um, whether you could have taken once again little cameo pictures of that I'm wondering as part of, is this in a workshop setting? Are there other bits and pieces that are lying on the bench? Old kind of uh, hammers, spanners, things like that. That could help tell the story as well. Uh, I can understand, you know, whether there are other distracting things around. Um, but if there are, you know, uh, as part of opening up that composition, um, there are other elements that would help me 
understand what I'm looking at, apart from looking at it at just a pattern picture, then I, I think that possibly could help as well. So next image is called Harold is showing off again. I like that you've got three within um, within the frame. You haven't got half a sheep. You've very carefully made sure the one in the upper left hand corner is still fully within the frame. Um, as part of that diagonal composition, you've got a larger one on the left hand side balanced out by two smaller sheep on the right hand side. So I think that does work as well. I'm not sure how you've done it, but all of, the, all of the three sheep look like that they are looking towards the photographer. So congratulations for that as well. You've not included any sky and I think that's probably appropriate. The lighting's probably not been the kindest on the day. Um, and so the sky probably wouldn't have helped me tell, um, add anything to the story anyway. So that's absolutely fine. I think for me, though, what kind of lets it down that the file is kind of the quality um, for me. Even if um, I take the, the sheep on the left hand side, I would expect that to be sharp. And I don't think it's as sharp as it possibly could be. The ones on the left hand side, uh, depending on what aperture you've, re uh, aperture you've used, um, are definitely not sharp. Um, there is detail there. It shows a bit of recession uh, within the frame as well. But I think probably I'd want the images just a bit sharper. Um, the next image is called Gold Leaf. And I liked the idea of this. Um, wondered how it, it had actually been done. Um, it's kind of a fairly close macro style picture, uh, whether it's been done by using a mirror or having water. Um, I think, yes, um, the way the lighting is, it adds, the, the way the lighting's been set up or has been created, um, it adds something to the scene. I like the coloration. Um, I like the kind of the translucency that's coming through the leaf. You can see the veins on the leaf as well the main point of interest which is the real leaf itself um it is, sh is sharp where it needs to be just off center but you've made sure as part of the lighting that the stem of the leaf you can still see against the dark background um you can still see a little bit of rim lighting all the way through i think it's an attractive composition and i think you've done well to either see this na naturally in the environment or set it up within a, a studio setting. The next image is called Fishing Coaching Style. I think you've caught the fisherman at the opportune moment, right at the peak of the action, where the net is at full spread. So I commend the author for that as well. I like kind of the V-shaped composition that, he, that the person's arms in as well. You've got the wave as well. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, you've done a reasonable job. You've not included any sky once again. And I think that probably wouldn't have included anything uh, to the story. I wondered as much as you've concentrated at one figure and the net as well. Um, when I've seen compositions like this, it's the lighting that makes it kind of last kind of catch of the day or early morning, that kind of sunrise, that golden lighting that really kind of makes the net stand out against um, the darker sea. Um, however, you were there at that time. Was there anything else you could have included in the story to just help it? Um, you know, it's quite a flat composition that you've presented um, is there anything that you could have put on the shore? Are there any kind of um, boats, oars, or the fishermen, and then use the the fishermen with the net as a um, as kind of a secondary focal point? Um, also, you know, even though you've taken it in bright contrasty conditions, I think you've just got enough detail in the the crest of the wave as well. Um, you are losing a little bit of detail in the dark blue shirt, but I would probably expect that because it is more 
in shadow as well. I, I just think if you're going to, you know, you're going to present these as part, kind of competition uh, photographs as much as absolutely it is a competition photograph. Um, is there anything else compositionally you could do to make it stand out from the rest? Because that's what I feel the winners or the ones that I'm going to give the awards to in, in a little while have just got. This is called Fishing at Black Nab. And I liked the, the idea of this. The author's got kind of almost fairly close to the water's edge, almost. Uh, you know, they're not too high up. So you've got that layering effect. You've got, it looks like kind of a fairly slow shutter speed. You've got kind of the milky water. You've got the uh, little bits of rocks that are jutting up um, as well. I think that helps. Then you've got the main rock in the background and then you've got the fisherman just on one side, just on the left hand side as well. And then you've still got some recession as part of a uh, fairly low light in the background. So I can see the clouds um, beyond as well. There is a bit of coloration that's in the sky as well. I just didn't know as part of this composition, I know why you presented like that, you wanted to see all of the rocks in the foreground, is whether actually cropping in fairly tight and just um, probably at the end of the large rock, possibly, just to make that figure just a little bit bigger. Um, you do have to, as much as it is a quite a clearly defined silhouette, you still have to search for the fisherman within the composition and I just think cropping in a little bit tighter or if you'd have had a longer lens um, just to be, still be able to get the effect of having the milky water and the rocks in the foreground and the larger rock um, but just allow you to kind of concentrate more on the fisherman. Next image is called First Night Nerves And, you know, I can imagine the setting, even though, you know, this is uh, this young lady surrounded by empty chairs. You know, she uh, she's gone to the theatre or it's a school play and she's waiting to go up on stage. And that's kind of the story that I am trying to build up in my mind. I haven't got a problem with the way that you know, the person's dressed. You've you've chosen competently just to crop off. Uh, what she's she's wearing on her feet um, and I just kind of wondered uh, as part of that you probably needed to have made a decision um, to say I either include the whole person including the shoes um, and I wondered whether those added to the costume or not um, or probably bend down a little bit closer and get more to the person's level. So when you're taking people, when you're taking pictures of children, if you try and get more towards their eye level, then it, it just compositionally looks a little bit more pleasing. Otherwise, as an adult, you're kind of standing more uh, above them, a little bit too tall, almost looking down on them. And that's what I feel you are doing as part of this. Also, it looks like a, 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 the way that you've potentially taken a picture, that you've used flash as well. Um, whether it's your, your pop-up flash or you've used a flash gun, um, it's quite direct flash. It's not overpowered the entire scene, but obviously as part of whatever flash you've, you've got, the fall off is quite dramatic, which is why, you know, uh, you can see the chairs that are lit behind, but nothing further than that. But I think probably the one thing to take away from this more than anything is just get probably get down if it's possible just more to the child's height to be able to take uh, the portrait um, as part of that. So the next one is called Empty Medieval Street and I thought this was interesting um, you've got interesting buildings on both sides. You've got the road to lead me down. I've got the building at the end 
as well and you've cropped him fairly tight so you've not included the roofs and I, I, you know and I think probably looking at the sky you've got an absolute minimal amount of sky um, and I think that works um, you've got all of the detail there I just feel it needs somebody in the street now it would be absolutely fantastic just to have a cat or somebody riding a bike or even just a bike by itself in the street but I think you, you just need something to just add to the story I feel um, but the buildings are really interesting all the way down and I can all I can see just by looking at the image on my screen there's one or two little cameo pictures of, of pictures of shutters all the way down that would make quite interesting pictures by themselves but yeah a bike, somebody in the street, somebody selling something in the street, or even just one person walking down, um, I think for me, would just help fill that uh, empty space in the foreground. So the next one's called Cellophane Ballerinas. And... It looks like that the author here has taken a picture of um, some artwork that they've seen um, while they've been away on holiday, etc. And it's always very difficult to add, as a photographer, your own interpretation on somebody else's artwork. Um, I, I think here you've gone, you've taken the documentary picture... The lighting's been fine on the day. I like the reflections in the water. Um, the buildings, there isn't anything too distracting. You haven't got any people, any tourists in the background either. So that does work as well. I just wonder to, to obviously try and encourage you to take your photography just a little bit further. It is possibly, if you'd have had a longer lens and taken kind of three separate pictures and then put them as a kind of a composite, maybe put a texture on it and, and, and put it into some kind of scene yourself. Um, whether that, you know, you could have used the elements um, for something that was part of a composition. Um, you know, it's a documentary style picture as it's currently shown. Um, for me, I don't feel it's strong enough to get into the awards. However, with the position of each of the uh, the ba kind of the the ballerina kind of style dresses is you, you know cut each one of them out put them on a stage you've got some kind of pattern you've got some kind of dancers especially as you can see all of the, the cellophane strips that are coming out on different angles so it, they're not going to look static you know put on uh, put in as another element as part of a file as well and that's sometimes when you go and take these style of pictures, that's what you have to think about is, yes, I've got the picture, but are, can I use these elements in other parts if, um, you know, you want to push your creativity just a little bit further? So this one's called Better Days. And, yeah... I can see I like that the you know the author's not taken this ninety degrees kind of square on. You've added a bit of you, you've moved a little bit, so I've got more of a three D effect that's been presented as part of the file. So I can see some of the front of the tractor, some of the side of the tractor, and also what it has been or what it is towing as well. I think there's enough detail all the way through. I like that the tractor's red and it's been covered by a yellow tarpaulin so you've got those kind of complementary colours in the frame as well it looks like quite soft lighting in the background but I think it's probably quite a, a natural scene if you if you wanted to try and um, you know uh, make it even more dynamic um, things like this uh, it looks like that you've used a, a 28 to 70 mil lens um, you've got a kind of a fairly standard uh, viewpoint as such I like the recession so the tractor sharp and then everything else I can still see detail but it's not um, you know completely out of focus uh, where I lose all kind of sense of what I'm looking at but you know 
in this case, a, a, a really wide angle lens, maybe a 12 mil, 16 mil, 14 or 12 mil going really, really close to that tractor and really kind of blow it out of uh, out of proportion and distort the tractor. Um, that might add um, a little bit more um, interest. The other thing that you possibly could have done if you're that way inclined is, uh, you know, uh, maybe a little bit of tone mapping. So there's lots of textures, lots of rusted textures um, in that tractor as well. So some kind of HDR technique or, or straightforward tone mapping might just bring out that coloration just a little bit more as well. Um, just like I say, add something a little bit different to the file. This one's called Beacon Felt. And it looks like you, you know, you've gone for a fairly wide viewpoint here. I like you've included the base of the trees. Um, and then, of course, it means then because your, your lens is so wide that you've got converging verticals. Um, from the trees and I think that does work as well I think what's also helped is the blue sky um, that that's worked and then you've you've just got yourself into a position compositionally where you've taken the harshness of the sun um, and, and you've kind of uh, dampened that down by using some of the branches of the trees I think that you know it absolutely does work but I kind of come back to um, you know, even as part of a landscape picture, what do you want? What are you trying to show me as part of the main focal point? So I've got a branch in the foreground just on, on the left hand side of the frame. I don't think that's strong enough for me to rest my eye on and then put all of the rest in the um, the overall scene into perspective. Um, as such I really need something just a little bit stronger and then this would be quite a, a suitable um, and an interesting background to show me next one's called at one's garden gate and you can see that because I can see just on the left hand side that open garden gate even though it's quite small still allows me to move through um, you've done some quite careful framing so as part of the, the chimney and the aerials as well you've not half cut that out you've, you've just got enough space at the top of the frame and then as part of the tree on the right hand side and the foliage I've got enough to move through to that very very pleasant English garden scene um, I can see why you've why you've, you've done it like this you've still got that layering effect but I, I'm wondering whether actually being able to especially if you knew the people go past the garden gate and just show more of the, the kind of the patio the chairs the plants and just a section of the house going and cropping in an awful lot tighter possibly might have been um, more interesting but you still got a stop on the left which is balanced with a stop on the right both green um the ivy on one side the tree on the other um pleasant scene but you know uh you know and i'm sure the people who own the house would be very very pleased to have seen that as well but you probably could get a couple of nice pictures um and give them to them to put on their wall as well to show all their hard work in that lovely garden And the final one, before we get to the awards, is A Winter's Day in Edinburgh. And I commend the author for trying to do something different. Um, absolutely, it's Edinburgh, uh, the Scott Monument there. And it looks like you've taken it through some kind of window, possibly. You can see the raindrops on the window. As part of that, you start to get some kind of art style texture that's on the buildings as well you've then got the ice rink in in the foreground um i don't think the weather's been too kind to you on the day at all which is really really unfortunate so the sharpest part of the image is probably the ice skaters at the, the bottom of the frame and that's absolutely fine but for me 
as you move kind of onto Princess Street on the left hand side or into Princess Street Gardens on the other side. As much as you want that, I think you're trying to portray that kind of art style feeling as such. Um, it, it's all becoming a little bit more kind of jumbled. It's very, very similar shape and texture on each side and kind of all starting to, to kind of mush together, really. Um, you still want to be able to see uh, some of the detail as, as part of that. Absolutely, I commend you for trying to be creative um, in camera as well, using perspective and depth of field. Um but probably you just need to think about the subject just a little bit more. It's not helped because half the image, um, it looks like your camera's tried to export, um, expose for the upper half of the frame, especially as you've included the top of the Scott Monument as well. And that's why you've kind of been left with a slightly underexposed left and right um, sides to the frame uh, as well. Um, so I would say keep practicing. So after all that, we come to the award winners and I felt that these kind of these files that are left, uh, these images were compositionally uh, the most interesting uh, of what I, I've seen as part of the section. Um, so we start off with on the job and this one for me gets a commended. And I liked the, the I liked the idea of the the story of this. Two people standing up, uh, one person on the mobile phone, two people sitting down, relaxing. So absolutely in complete contradiction to the title on the job. But I liked that you could move in from the left. You could move from person to person, and the person sitting on the floor acts then as a stop. You can see that they're all related to each other by the uh, the orange uh, jackets all the way through. Um, and I think that the author, even though cropped in fairly tight, has included everything that they needed to see. It's all about the people, or, and dare I say, the lack of work um, that they're actually doing. My second commended is called Fishing at Black Nab. And as part of a landscape picture, I think I've got my foreground, middle ground. And yeah, the focal point for me it is the bridge in the top right. The lighting's not been absolutely fantastic on the day, but I think that you've used it to your advantage. You've not included any sky, but you've still got coloration as part of the autumnal leaves that are around the scene. You've also got a diagonal composition as well so you can see the from the bridge in, in almost the top right with the water flowing to the bottom left as well it's sharp where it needs to be uh, and once again i like that movement that's um that's in the frame that slower shutter speed of water as well the one thing i'd just say to the author is just where you see some little bits of white um where the the water's kind of foaming up slightly i just probably just burn um, it down just a touch more. Um, however, I still think it's a pleasant landscape. And my third commend is at the Yorkshire Sculpture Park. And I liked this for a number of reasons. I think if it had just been the, the metal ball with um, with the pattern on, it it would have been okay, but I like that a the photographer's been brave to put themselves in it because you can see the reflection, and also just to give me a sense of scale and almost make it a little bit odd. You've got the two people who look like a cleaning it as well, kind of polishing this big ball, which makes it interesting. Um, I like that they've gone in fairly close as well, because then it just exaggerates the size of the uh, the metal polished ball as well, especially with the uh, the step ladders. Um, and once again, they're not just looking at it; they're actually interacting. But you can see him actually cleaning it with the with the cloth. You've got that darker sky, and I think having the greenery round as well just sets it all together uh, in quite a pleasing composition as well. So there are two 
highly commended. And the first one is called Conversation. And I liked the way that this was presented. I especially like the um, I like the carriage, the train and the conversation that's going on as well. Those three, that triangular composition right in the centre of the frame. So I can use that as, as a focal point. I like the steam coming out of the um, the engine as well and once again that darker with the carriage just coming in you've just shown me enough of the carriage to for me to imagine what the rest of the train looks like as well i think the footbridge also then acts as a bit of a frame as well for the engine and the action that's going on i can still see plenty of detail in the background so i can see the signal box and some of the signals and the line going off into the distance and the sky isn't distracting the only thing I would say to the author, and it's purely a personal choice at this point, is you've obviously got the sign on the left hand side. Now, the sign is related to the scene that I'm seeing, so I, I can understand why you've decided to include it into the frame. However, whenever you see writing within a frame, especially as for me, it's quite large and especially as it's clear and sharp, does it drag my attention away from the group that I'm seeing? So I'm kind of just at the minute holding my hand across uh, the sign and thinking, actually, if I cropped it with the bridge, with the level of the bridge, um, does that make it a more pleasing composition? And to be honest, it, it, it's entirely up to yourself uh, what, what you choose. Um, but because it is absolutely related to the scene that I'm seeing I can understand why you have included it and once again kind of cropping it is personal choice as well but I still liked the overall figures train and, and the carriage as well so that for me gets a, a deserved highly commended and my other highly commended is uh, called first goose and quite a simple landscape I feel it quite restful. I like the detail in the foreground. Um, I then like the solitary tree. I then like, as part of that, the recession that's in the background as well. So that very, very early morning mist, fog, absolutely all makes it. And then just to break up that kind of repeating pattern, I've then got the coloration of the early morning uh, light in the sky as well. I think all of that fits together. I can see why the authors called it first goose. Um, there is a bird just right in the top right hand corner. If I was being absolutely picky, is it a little bit close to the edge of the frame? And I think, unfortunately, for me, it is. I can see that it's coming into the frame. Um, it, it depends com completely on the author. But I think if you were going to include um, birds in the frame, then would it be worth adding kind of a, a formation of birds um, on the left hand side? That's it. That's entirely kind of your decision. Um, but I just think instead of just having one right in the corner, it would be more pleasing to have them more centrally within the frame where I noticed it. Whereas I only noticed it by accident, really right on the edge. We then come to the third image which gets the place called Boat Ruins. And I liked the composition. The author has gone down fairly low. I've got an interesting lead in, uh, some footprints in the mud. It looks like that they've also put together, um, put it into an HDR technique as well. That's really kind of brought out all of the textures on the boat, especially the one on the right hand side. For me, the most powerful part of the image is not just the two boats, but also the sky as well. The wonderful patterns and the darker clouds 
in the sky. Um, really, really attractive. Um, I like the lighting all the way through. It's pin sharp where it needs to be as well. Um, and I think this will do quite well for you in external club competitions. The only thing I would just say to the author. Just on the left hand part of the image, just right in the corner on the edge. You've just got a little bit that looks like it's burnt out or very, very white cloud. I just either burn that in or just crop it off just right on the corner being absolutely picky. Um, however, apart from that, um, great image. And like I say, do very well for you in external competitions. So my second image um, that gets second place is called Going For It. And I really liked this. I liked the coloration as part of it. Looks like it's possibly been taken at a velodrome, maybe the Manchester velodrome. Um, great colours. You've got movement in the wheels as well. Um, I like, once again, you can see the layering in the track. So I've got a darker right in the corner on the left hand side. And then I can move to a lighter so I know how big the track is. And then it goes to, once again, a darker blue in the background as well. I like the expression on the rider's faces. I always think as part of sports photography, if you can see kind of the effort, the determination as well, then that comes across. There's nothing burnt out. As I say, movement in the wheels, all of those bits and pieces, absolutely spot on as well. The, for me, the front rider or the rider, uh, which looks like a lady, closer to the photographer, her face is slightly sharper than the uh, the guy in the background however i still think it just adds a little bit of depth to uh, the image as well and i think that's uh, great they've also got space to move into it's just got a nice flow that goes all the way through the image and so the winner of the advanced color section is called the king's men um, obviously it's not up to me to decide how it's been put or guess how it's been put together but if it's a composite I think the author's done really really well I like the strong figure on the right hand side you can really use that as a stop then as you move back into the frame you've then got that great expression and you can see the gun firing from the figure you can see the puff of smoke as well you can also see as you start to peer through the smoke in the background but isn't overtaking that main figure is you've got one or two other um, people who are firing rifles which then gives you the atmosphere of all the additional mist and smoke uh, from what's been fired as well I think the lighting in the in the cases as well the lighting is if, if the two characters the main characters have been put together then uh, the lighting is falling exactly in the in the, the right direction in the same direction as well it comes across um, as a really really competent image and I'd be very pleased of either putting that together or, or capturing that as well so that is my winner of the section